this episode is um I, I'm still I, I just watched it yesterday and I'm still like shook by it. It's so mm. well done. So I would love to ask you what kinds of emotions for you? I can only imagine what you were feeling when you felt first read the script or you know heard about the project. Uh, so happy and like shocked that oh this story is being told. Yes, finally. Oh my god, like yes, like it's about time. It made sense that it's happening now, maybe, but it was still surprising because it's like almost like a kid in a candy store. It's like, oh yes, yeah. I get to do this or I get this candy that I love uh, so much that I haven't had since my childhood. It's a almost baklava. yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Only if my mom made it. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. But um, I would say for me, like obviously, it's very personal, being that I'm Arabic, Lebanese, Muslim. Uh, from a small town village in, in the Bekaa Valley. So we had a lot of similarities in common, me and, and the character that I portrayed, Shadi. And uh, so for me, it just, there, it was loaded. It was so much. It was basically me going back to my childhood and me thinking about, you know, what I went through as a, a gay person growing up in an Arab, predominantly Muslim country. Um, you know, we had so much in common. So I, to me, I couldn't get more excited about anything. I've done projects like The Visitor, Nurse Jackie, which really I'm proud of, but and Killing Jesus to portray Jesus. Love Nurse Jackie, by the way. Thank you. <laughs> and per, Killing Jesus, like to per, yeah. portray Jesus and me being, I mean, I was not openly gay, but now I am, you know, but you know, that was cool to me too as well. But this is special because I was able to, in a way, tell my story, but also tell more importantly, Shadi's story and also the story of all the different LGBTQ people in the, maybe in the, different parts of the world, whether it's the Middle East or anywhere else in the world where it's harder for them to be themselves. They're not allowed, they're afraid, they're living in like isolation, uh, which is my case when I was in Lebanon. And so for me, um, I think what happens in this country and in Europe, uh, queer people forget that. They forget that it's not the same everywhere else like it is in America. And mm -hmm. even in America, like actually, we're still dealing with big things like queer youth committing suicide yes. because of bullying. And I think that is really one of the biggest problems we have today in this country. But I think uh, when you look at all of that, then you realize that, yes, these stories even more so need to be told because of that. Because people need to be reminded of that. We forget these things. And we take for granted that we live in this country and we have all these rights and privileges. And I think, again, a show like this reminds us to be grateful for it all. That's exactly what it was for me because I'm from Los Angeles, but I was, you know, thinking about what it would be like to not be able to walk out my front door and be who I am. Right. And that's yeah. exactly yeah. what yeah. the story tells. Yeah. I mean, imagine if you're in that situation, what would you do? You know? Yeah. I mean, it, de it definitely does make you thankful. Um, so you came to the States, I think, when you were 21. Yes. Um, just last year, no, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. How did you know? <laughs> um, it Thank wasn't you. last year. So, well, you know, I, and I know you came out in 2017, at least publicly. Yes. You know, because you're, you know, professionally. Yeah. Yes. Um, what was it like from the time of you coming when you were 21, getting into acting, and then in 2017 you said, okay, I have to, you know, put it all out there and come out? Ooh, that's a very big question. Um... Uh, well, okay, I'm very articulate, so let me find the best way to articulate that. Um, I, when I first moved uh, to, Le to America when I was 21, I carried the chains in the prison that I was in in Lebanon. That's just human nature. I carried it with me. I was still stuck in that victim mentality. So it took me a while to understand that I hated myself, I lacked self-worth, My, I was very insecure, but that's normal. You know, as a queer kid growing up in an environment where you're not naturally or like fully nurtured for who you are, you're not right. allowed to fully be yourself, to develop your true character, personality of who you are. I was never given that. And I think a lot of queer people are not given that in some parts of the world, even here in, mm -hmm. in America in some parts as of well. Um, and I think for me, carrying that with me in America I struggled a lot. I was maybe at times dishonest. I was maybe at times manipulative. I was maybe at times, it all came from a place of fear and survival and trying to think that this is what I have to do oh, to survive because that's what I had to do in Lebanon. I, like, I had to pretend I was straight. Mm -hmm. I was really good at it. That's why I'm actually able to, as an actor, play straight easily and be convincing. So I got my training actually in Lebanon mm -hmm. for that. I think in America, I was just going through a journey during that period that you're asking me of self-discovery, of understanding my value and my worth and understanding really 
how this whole thing works, the design of it all, like what it is to be human and just go deep in it. And being an actor forced me to do that because I put, I chose kind of like the worst and the best career for that because the worst in the sense I'm putting myself so exposed in the open and, and all I've been doing in my life is hide, hide, hide. And now I'm like, I'm forced to actually face right. the things that I don't want to face. So it was good for me in that way, but it was frightening on the sense that I was often put in a position where I, I felt like I had to lie. Like for instance, with The Advocate, when I did Nurse Jackie and they interviewed me. And I remember telling Showtime, I was like, please, as long as no personal questions, they guaranteed that there would, not, there would be no personal questions. Then they did ask me a personal question at the end of the interview and they said, are you gay or straight? Yikes. I lied and I said, I'm straight. So that then really, kept eating me up from the inside. And I felt very ashamed and embarrassed and not proud of myself. And so during that time, lying about that, and then you know, even lying to the creators of Nurse Jackie who were two lesbians, and they said, oh, Haz, you're such a wonderful actor. You're a straight actor who plays gay with such compassion and empathy. And I just wanted to scream out, I'm gay, but I was so afraid. Right. And so that, with me lying to the advocate, combined with just RuPaul's Drag Race and the evolution of what's happening in this country and TV shows like you know being portraying gays in a different mm -hmm. way glee and all of that right the movies that are coming out I think that movement the evolution of it all with you know watching because I'm a big fan of RuPaul's Drag Race yeah. um, it really just I, I admire the, the 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 boys that participate in RuPaul's show because I think they're so courageous to be themselves and for me all of that combined with the killings of yeah. trans women of color just made me want to come out. I just couldn't do it anymore. And also for me as an artist, it's very important that I tell the truth in my work. So I felt like a hypocrite. Like how could I right. be a, a, a genuinely, a genuine artist with integrity, but I'm still afraid to share my truth. And so it just came out in the way it came out. It came out with a bang because I was very angry. I was angry at the world, angry at myself for allowing these lies to shape my life, angry for, at myself for living uh, these lies for so long and not actually realizing that they're lies and giving them so much weight. And it just came out in that way because of that. It's a reaction to the struggle that I've been going through for a decade. So you've been talking about, you know, representation in movies. Obviously, The Eternals mm. is coming. I know you can't tell us a lot about it. We know it's happening. What does it mean for you to go from someone who was afraid to you know, be who they are, talk about their sexuality, to be part of history making um, when it comes to LGBTQ representation in the Marvel universe. Amazing, it's like I get to be part of that. I get to be part of, you know, uh, maybe helping um, LGBTQ people like see a positive image of themselves, uh, queer families see a, a beautiful positive image of themselves as families, queer families are amazing to me. And I think the fact that Marvel decided to show that uh, side of uh, LGBTQ people, you know, like as a queer family, as parents having children, um, because that's also been new, right? Just mm -hmm. the last few years we've been seeing that because of gay marriage. It's becoming more visible, you know? And for me, I think just being part of that and part of this Marvel movement is to me no different from the show Visible on uh, Apple TV Plus in terms of all the different shows that did that. And now I get to be part of that. It's, it's beyond an honor, it's kind of, it's in alignment, in alignment with what I like to do, which is basically, you know, empower, enlighten, and inspire.